Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Alex Paul from Investor Stream, and I'll be your host today. Joining us this morning is Future Metals Managing Director, J.D. Kinnamanth, who will provide an update on the progress of the company's Panton project as it relates to metallurgical breakthroughs, scoping study and forward plans, as well as an overview and update on its nickel sulphide exploration program. J.D. will provide a short presentation on this progress, followed by a Q&A session. Please feel free to send in your questions via the chat platform in the question pane in the GoToWebinar control panel, or simply email them to me at alex at investorstream.com you can also download a copy of the presentation by navigating to the handouts pane in the control panel and I understand it's also been lodged on the ASX. Finally, a copy of the webinar will also be available on Future Metals website and social media platforms later today. But for now, I'd like to throw it over to Jardy to kick things off for us. Jardy, the floor is yours. Thanks for that intro, Alex. And I uh, just want to say good morning to our valued shareholders and any other interested parties uh, dialing in. Um, we're providing this update of a general nature as we head into what is going to be a, a, an exciting and, and, and fairly pivotal quarter for Future Metals. Um, so we'll just show the, the disclaimer there, so um, noting that, that any representations made by myself or uh, information provided in this presentation should be uh, due diligence by any uh, investors ahead of any um, decision making as it relates to investing in Future Metals. So Future Metals is, is really a tale of two uh, value drivers uh, and so this presentation uh, and webinar is, is split up as such. Um, the, the first value driver is, is really our significant and high grade PGM deposit and the scoping study that we're progressing on that deposit. Uh, and then the second value driver is really our compelling nickel sulphide uh, exploration model which if we are progressing on that same ground that this deposit uh, this PGM deposit sits upon. So really, um, you know, the, that, that leads to two kind of work streams, to two focuses for the company at the moment. One is the scope and study, which is progressing very well. Um, we're confident that that is going to detail a long life, low capital, uh, high grade PGM operation, showing strong economics at a range of, uh, a range of price assumptions and, and, and other uh, sensitivities. Um, and really the, the foundations for that and, and what differentiates Future Metals is our high grade uh, PGM deposit. It is the highest grade uh, deposit uh, or it contains the highest grade discrete component within that deposit out of any other Australian PGM deposit. Uh, and that, that's that 2.9 million ounces at circa four grams a tonne palladium equivalent. And then that sits within a broader mineralized bulk uh, parcel, um, which brings the total uh, total contained resource to 6.9 million ounces palladium equivalent. Um, so obviously a significant uh, resource inventory to wrap a, a scoping study around um, there. Um, certainly it's a very well located project, um, first and foremost being in the eminent mining jurisdiction of Western Australia. Um, and that's, a, you know, I think, a key point of difference relative to PGM projects globally, given that the, the majority of supply does come out of the, the more challenged uh, jurisdictions of, of Russia and South Africa. Um, more locally, in terms of infrastructure, we've got great access there. So we're one kilometre off the Great Northern Highway. We're 70 kilometres from uh, sealed airstrip at, at Halls Creek. And then we sit between the two major towns in the East Kimberley being uh, Halls Creek and Kununurra. Um, there as well. So that, that lends itself to that, that statement around progressing a low capital um, uh, project as part of that scoping study. A lot of that infrastructure cost that uh, more remote projects have to take on is, is not a consideration for us with Panton. Uh, and then certainly we have easy access to a deep water port at the Port of Wyndham, um, which, which is at the essentially at the end of the Great Northern Highway, which runs past our project. One thing I really want to stress as part of this webinar, and I think is, has been somewhat lost on the market, and I encourage anyone tuning in to, to submit questions as it relates to this, is really the, the de-risking of the metallurgy that has occurred over the past 18 to 24 months um, by Future Metals. Uh, we, we took control of the project with a significant um, bevy of, of test work behind us, and we've capitalised extremely well on that test work to, to really put in a rock solid um, flow sheet to deliver that deposit to, a, to an economic outcome. Um, and really the, the linchpin for that, it starts with the flotation. We are able to produce a very high concentrate grade at recoveries, very comparable to what they're achieving in uh, the similar 
or from similar deposits in the bushveld in South Africa. Um, so circa 80% recovery is to a flotation concentrate of, of in excess of 250 grams a tonne. Um, adjoining that or appending that is the, the bulk ore sorting test work that we, we've undergone, um, which shows uh, very high efficiency with X-ray transmission technology to separate um, the high grade mineralisation from waste and from low grade mineralisation. Um, which minimises capex and opex relative to, to not including that ore sorting, and it has a very high recovery, circa 97% of that high grade mineralisation. Again, this is a, a technology that's used very commonly uh, for a similar style of ore body in South Africa. Um, we've also been progressing uh, our ongoing review of um, prior metallurgical test work on Panton. Um, and we're, we're pleased to, to see that it, it, it appears that tailings leaching uh, of using conventional uh, methods is going to have a significant uh, boost to overall recoveries as well. And we've got our own tests underway currently, which we, we look to, which we will look to uh, announce results on um, in the near term. Uh, and we're not stopping there in terms of monetizing the deposit. Um, there's also um, you know, a significant amount of test work on concentrating or creating chromite concentrate from the, the tailings uh, from the flotation uh, 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 cell as well. Uh, and then lastly, we're, we're, um, we're looking at downstream integration of the project. So this is really an aid of um, producing a high payability, low emissions PGM project uh, pro product and uh, associated base metals. Uh, that will, will allow us to deal directly with the manufacturers of uh, clean energy transition technologies such as fuel cell, uh, EVs and uh, electrolyzers, as opposed to selling a concentrate to a smelter. Uh, and I'll step through the benefits of, of going down that path in a bit more detail um, uh, uh, later. Uh, and that, that's really complemented, you know, that, all of that work that's, that's gone into de-risking that flow sheet is heavily complemented by um, you know, the, the, the significant um, uh, sunk cost that we get to draw on in terms of the, the existing decline that sits at Panton. Um, certainly that allows us to progress through the study phase and towards construction and production and cash flow much quicker than any comparable um, PGM project in Australia. Um, and, and we do that essentially by potentially looking to open up that decline, uh, rehab it, and then extract a metallurgical sample to, to test the flow sheet at a demonstration scale, uh, which, which would, uh, as I say, accelerate the, the ability to get Pant onto a bankable stage. So that's, that's the brief overview of where, um, where Panton sits at, a, at the PGM project level. And then, as I say, the other value driver at, at Panton, which we're progressing, is the nickel sulfide, sulfide exploration. Um, we have a very enviable land position in the East Kimberley, which is a, a perennially underexplored um, region that is, that is highly prospective for nickel sulfide um, occurrences. Really, there is no reason why there shouldn't be a nickel belt um, along the, the East, the, the Halls Creek origin in East Kimberley. Um, and, and certainly IGO, the, the $10 billion nickel uh, and lithium producer is alive to that possibility, hence why they've, they've pegged uh, close to 15,000 square kilometres across the East and West Kimberley um, over the last few years. And certainly the, large, um, the other large major miners are, are waking up to the potential of the area as well. Um, we obviously know that we're sitting on a, a prime piece of land because it's, it's already shown that it has the, the right deposit making formula um, in that it's given us you know, the Panton PGM deposit, but we think there's much more to give, um, it, whether that's within the, the Panton seal that we own 100% of or the uh, Panton North and Copernicus North projects um, that we've farmed into with partner uh, Octava Minerals. Uh, and so that's that's an exciting, um, you know, we've got a number of exciting targets um, that we're that we're progressing scout drilling on currently. Um, one of them being the BC1 embayment prospect, um, which adjoins um, uh, our Panton Panton project, and then we've also got the, the Panton West project. Both of these sitting within that that um, that Panton North uh, project that we're farming into. Um, and so those both have multiple coincident indicators um, suggesting uh, the potential for an accumulation of nickel, copper, 
PGM mineralization. And as I say, we are progressing scout drilling uh, on that currently. So we have a great board and management team to, to progress Panton. Um, you know, we, on the board, we've got significant company and project builders with, with prior PGM experience and prior operating context at Panton. And then certainly from a management team point of view, um, we have the full suite of skill sets required to progress both a uh, you know, maturing PGM development project, but also progressing our nickel sulphide exploration model. So we'll touch on the market um, briefly. So the, the key demand uh, markets for platinum and palladium in particular are the are catalytic converters, which, are, uh, which go on um, combustion engine vehicles. Um, and we see that as being the key driver for the demand moving forward. But I think you know, as, as we progress through to a, a clean energy transition, um, there's going to be a multi-pronged approach to, uh, I guess, changing the personal mobility sector. And certainly um, PGMs have a big part to play in that in terms of ongoing demand from combustion engine vehicles, increasing demand uh, for hybrid vehicles, increasing demand for fuel cell vehicles, and then obviously there's the other leg in terms of battery, uh, battery uh, vehicles there as well. Um, the hydrogen growth story is real. There is a significant amount of capital being thrown, um, thrown into the industry to, to bring that cost of hydrogen down, which would ultimately increase the market penetration rates of fuel cell vehicles um, in particular. Um, you know, the likes of the, the US Inflation Reduction Act and the EU Green Industrial Plan are, are going to be um, key drivers for, for that occurring. And I certainly see, uh, you know, platinum's, platinum's exposure to that hydrogen space probably similar or, or, or the, the growth out of the hydrogen space probably similar uh, in terms of where the, the battery space was uh, in, in 2019 and lithium's exposure to that. So um, it's certainly uh, showing its green shoots. We've, we've got the right amount of incentive, uh, incentive being thrown at the industry. And, and I think we'll start seeing um, the resulting demand for those raw materials um, start to materialize in the near term. It's worth noting here as well that, you know, in the near term, there is forecast to be one million ounce deficit in the platinum market um, by the end of the year, uh, and that's pretty significant given that the, the platinum market is a is a 7.5 to 8 million ounce market, uh, and, and we're getting forecasts from some of the big investment banks suggesting that uh, the platinum price is going to go up to a circa US $1,500 an ounce from its its current uh, level of, of uh, $1,000 an ounce. I think uh, the the supply side is um, is probably easier to understand. Uh, uh, in terms of price upside for, for PGMs as well. Uh, it's a very concentrated market on the supply side. So the, the majority of the PGMs come from South Africa and Russia. Um, clearly they're challenged uh, investment jurisdictions relative to, to particularly Australia. Um, a lot of Russian supply is, is now going through, through China and hence why there hasn't been a huge impact on prices. Um, but I think that the key for, for an improved price environment really stems from potential supply shocks coming out of South Africa. Um, South Af Africa has been a perennially challenged uh, environment for, for operators there, um, particularly due to the power availability. Up until very recently, they were in a state of emergency due to the, to the, the rolling blackouts that were occurring there. Um, there's very often uh, labour strikes, uh, and, and they're also dealing with deepening mines and the costs associated with operating those deepening mines, um, given that that has been the, uh, that, that same uh, deposit or series of deposits the Bushveld has been extracted for a very long time and been the key source of PGMs globally for a very long time. The point to, to note here as well is that PGMs are a very uh, scarce metal, even relative to gold, copper, you know, lithium rare earths. Um, there's, there's just not new discoveries being made in the PGM space. And that was even, you know, that's a true statement for even three to four years ago when um, palladium prices were, were, and rhodium prices were, were bringing up the total price basket to be quite high and it was attracting a lot of explorers' interest. Um, you know, I think we're seeing every other week a new discovery in the, in the rare earth space, which, which I guess suggests the, the rarity of that, that mineral. Um, you're certainly not seeing the same uh, outcomes for, for PGMs. 
Um, and I think that highlights the, the, the inherent value of, of Panton being one of the highest grade undeveloped projects sitting out of Russia and South Africa. Um, it is a very hard to replace asset, which we own 100% of. So we'll just touch briefly on that, that in location infrastructure again. Um, so we are on the Great Northern Highway, which is a very well kept uh, piece of road up there. There's a number of operations that run along that road, including the Savannah Nickel Mine owned by Panoramic. Um, and we're, we're between uh, the towns of, of Kununurra and Halls Creek, which are potential sources of, of future labour and contractors uh, during construction and operations. Uh, and certainly um, there's, there's also access to that port of the deep water port at Wyndham for exporting concentrated and importing um, reagents and other fixed capital. Uh, and as we look for towards potential downstream integration, there's the potential to tap into the Ord River Hydro scheme, scheme as well. So Kununurra and, and Wyndham both run off uh, essentially zero emission energy from uh, the, the hydro scheme at Lake Argyle. So the resource is split across um, two discrete components, one being a, a very high grade uh, chrome type PGM reef, very similar to the UG2 reef uh, in the bushveld in, in uh, South Africa. And then that is surrounded by a, um, a more disseminated style of mineralization uh, that is laterally and, and lateral, laterally quite continuous, as you can see. So um, the resource spreads across a strike of, of five kilometers and it's drilled down to a depth of 800 meters. Um, we've got a, a deeper step out hole that we're incorporating into a, a new resource estimate that we're, we're working up currently. Um, so, you know, and I guess some more figures in terms of dimensions are that 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 um that reef is is uh, mineralized at a width of circa one to four meters, and then that bulk mineralization is at a width of of circa twenty five to fifty meters. Um, it's worth knowing that that deep drill hole PS four one four that we drilled um, in January. Um, it, you know, it, it obviously stepped out that high grade mineralization, but it, it certainly demonstrated that it's continuing, uh, the, the, the reef is continuing as it plunges to the, the southwest. Um, so there's, there's certainly uh, upside at depth there as well. So the, the project delivery strategy and, and how we're progressing the scoping study is really looking at, um, at, at two potential outcomes. One is progressing a project up until a to, to produce a bulk nickel PGM concentrate, at which point that would be sold onto um, a smelter or a trader who, who then sells it onto the smelters. We'd also look at leaching the tails uh, and monetizing that tailings leachate as well as um, selling a chromite concentrate there as well. Um, and then the second uh, or the alternative um, option that we're looking at is a, a downstream integrated project um, whereby that concentrate is further upgraded um, utilising a hydrometallurgical uh, facility. Um, and, and certainly, you know, there, there are some key advantages to the downstream processing route. Um, it does come with a, a slight additional capital cost, but fortunately, because we are producing such a high grade PGM concentrate, um, it, it, it does minimise um, it, it does minimise that, that, that capital requirement. And we, you know, from from additional, uh, sorry, from preliminary assessment of the the downstream processing, um, it shows that 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 additional capital is certainly made up with or made up from um, the additional payabilities that you get for producing a refined uh, PGM project that, uh, product that you can then sell onto um, you know cust uh, customers in the fuel cell or, or electrolyze industry. Uh, so I guess the other benefit there with the downstream processing is the, the ESG, ESG or emissions credentials. Um, it's certainly a, a method of processing that, that um, reduces emissions relative to the smelting market, um, particularly the smelting markets in, in South Africa and Russia, um, which utilise uh, you know, the energy produced from thermal coal. Um, we would potentially be looking at producing a metals product that's that's utilising um, hydro-powered uh, energy. Um, so there, there's a raft of benefits there, and we're we're, we're essentially using the scoping study uh, to to stack up those potential uh, avenues.
um, against each other. I guess the other point to note there is that they don't necessarily have to happen at the same time as well. They're not mutually exclusive, um, so it, it can always happen sequentially. The other thing that, that I wanted to run through um, you know, as part of de-risking the flow sheet is ore sorting. Um, Panton, the Panton PGM deposit really is the, I guess, textbook deposit for uh, an ore sorter to be effective with. Um, it's very heterogeneous, so the, the chromatite reef is very, very different to the surrounding mineralised um, uh, material as well as the, the waste. Um, and, and so essentially what that means is that the, the chromatite reef is a lot more dense, um, up to 30 to 40 percent more dense than the surrounding uh, mineraliz mineralisation and waste, which means that X-ray transmission technology can that's used in the ore sorters uh, can very effectively separate that high grade out from the, the lower grade material and the waste. And so this has a, a range of, or a number of benefits to the project. It, it minimizes the impact of mining dilution. So we are mining quite a narrow ore body here um, and dilution becomes a you know, significant consideration as part of that. Uh, but, but what the ore sorter allows us to do is basically um, utilise more conventional mining shapes and more conventional uh, mining equipment and get rid of that dilution or diluted material up at surface utilising the ore sorter. This improves the process head grade as it goes into the mill and the mill is what, what brings a lot of your operating cost um, to, to the equation. So, um, you know, what this makes sure is that you, you're only throwing you know, the, the OPEX at the, um, the material that's carrying the metal that you're ultimately going to sell. Um, and it also minimises the, the, the CAPEX by um, reducing the, the relative plant size required, given that you've upgraded that material before, um, before it goes into the, um, into the flotation plant. And the last, uh, you know, the last additional benefit I'll touch on there is that it does clean the product um, because it can separate out magnesite and talc, um, which are both waste or gang materials that that, um, that negatively affect flotation conditions. It also improves your ability to um, to recover uh, recover PGMs once it's in the flotation circuit. So just retouching on uh, the downstream processing and the benefits there. So we have. Um, a technical partnership underway with LifeZone Metals, um, uh, who, are, who are, we're looking at integrating into our, um, our scoping study to assess that, that, that downstream option. Um, LifeZone Metals are the, the owners of the most progressed um, hydromet technology as it relates to, um, to processing PGMs. Um, they've done uh, you know, pilot and demonstration scale testing on a range of um, different concentrates throughout South Africa and, and abroad uh, and, are, and are currently developing a refinery in South Africa um, with one of the, the upstream producers there. Um, fortunately, we, we've already had uh, some Panton concentrate uh, tested with them and it's showing 99% recoveries for, for most of the metals that, that really matter for our concentrate being the platinum, palladium and nickel. And um, as I touched on previously, it, it is showing, um, our preliminary modelling is showing that um, there are significant benefits to, to the economics um, through going the, the, downstream, uh, the downstream route, as well as those ESG benefits that I touched on previously. So this is really the last slide as it relates to the, the PGM um, project and the scoping study. Um, but I think I just wanted to, to stress that um, you know, it is a it is a mature um, development project. We have a mature flow sheet in place, um, and and this scoping study work is um, is 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 nearing completion. We're we're looking to bring it out in early Q4, which will hopefully elucidate the market to the the value of Panton. Um, but certainly, given that the amount of work that has gone into the project over the years, we um, we are at a, a head start relative to any other. Um, PGM uh, project explorers or developers in, in Australia um, and, and um, particularly I think that decline um, gives us a strong advantage in being able to test our flow sheet at a demonstration scale and, and quickly go from scoping study to, um, to a bankable feasibility study uh, relative to, to um, to the other projects out there. So we'll touch on the, the Panton Geology um, 
briefly. Um, so <coughs> we've got the A, B and C zones and the D zone uh, on this, this plan view. Um, that's essentially the, where the, the outcropping uh, chrome type reef is, is shown and then that, that essentially, essentially forms a syncline or, or a, 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 the shape that's similar to the hull of a ship that plunges to the southwest. Um, and that's really your, your, as I say, your, your Bushfeld analogous style um, deposit. Um, and so that, that's the kind of proof in the pudding that we, we are sitting on, you know, in the right environment for um, an ore body to be made because we, we know we've got a, you know, we've got a high grade continuous PGM reef on our hands. Um, but what, what we've discovered through our um, nickel sulphide exploration work over the past 12 months is that our, um, our Panton seal is basically a, a, an intrusive complex. So it's, it's basically had multiple pulses of magma um, and, and so we've had one pulse of magma that's obviously put, pushed into this uh, PGM reef, but there's, there's clearly been um, many more pulses that have come up through the same kind of mantle tapping structures that, that brought up that pulse. And we think there's a high, high chance that um, one or more of those pulses of magma has also delivered a, you know, an, another style of, of mineralisation into the, the um, Panton complex. And that includes the, the um, Panton North project, which is sitting off to the, the north of, of um, this plan view here. Um, so certainly that's what we're, we're aiming to discover um, as part of our, our nickel sulphide exploration. And, and any discovery there would clearly be highly complementary to uh, the existing um, PGM deposit that we have. So just to narrow down on that, that briefly, one of our key focuses, focus areas is this, um, what I would call the, the nickel sulphide hotspot on the Panton Sill and also adjoining Panton North. So we've had a number of um, historic intercepts um, near what is uh, this interpretive embayment target. Um, an embayment is, is basically a, a, an area where the sulphide mineralisation might pull when it's in place. Um, some of these prior intercepts include 19 metres at 0.5% nickel and 0.3% copper and half a gram PGM. But within that, we have, we're seeing intercepts um, exceeding 1% nickel and 1% and copper as well. So there's, there's clearly um, you know, much more at play at Panton just outside of that chrome type reef. Um, you know, we've got this PS53 historical intercept that's shown four metres at 1.2% nickel, 1% copper and two grams gold. That was found quite quite close to the reef. Um, you know, if you if you find an accumulation of that, that's clearly uh, a, a high grade um, and, and economic ore body um, in addition to to the ore body that we have. So certainly, that's that's the kind of um, that's the kind of mineralisation that we're hunting for. So we're we're drilling, we're doing a scout drilling program into this embayment feature, which is showing this this EM uh, conducted con, uh, conductive anomaly here. Um, and we're also looking at Panton, Panton West. Um, both of these targets uh, have, have not been tested, but have been worked up um, using uh, using new and historic data to the point that we're we're con, you know content that they're um, they're high quality drill targets, uh, particularly given that we're testing them with shallow RC drilling, which is relatively inexpensive there as well. Um, Panton West is quite exciting here because. It's again sitting on this major uh, mantle tapping structure. Um, we've got an interpreted uh, sill quite similar in age to the Panton sill um, that, that's, that, that, um, that we'll be drilling, the, I guess, the contact zone of. Uh, and then there's also EM anomalies and soil anomalies and rock chip anomalies uh, across that area as well. Um, so this drilling is occurring um, through through June and we'd hope to, to be able to um, release results on that, that drilling through July and August. Certainly ESG, um, ESG is of high importance to, to future metals. I think as it relates to, um, you know, we're, we're keen to provide a net benefit to society at large while delivering value to shareholders. Uh, and I think that comes from a, what I've talked about in terms of producing a low emissions um, product from uh, from the mine, but also creating economic development opportunities for um, the East Kimberley community, um, both the, the Malangaon people who are the traditional owners of the, the land that we're building, that we're progressing the project on, uh, but also the, the broader region as a whole. And then we, we certainly want to be, um, you know, responsible stewards of the land that we operate on uh, in, as it relates to the environment.
So this provides a snapshot of the uh, the work program through uh, the next few quarters. Um, so as I say, we've got the the, the drilling underway uh, on those nickel sulphide exploration targets currently. Assay results through Q3. Uh, we'd also look to kick off a, a soil sampling detailed mapping exercise to, to follow up on some um, pretty compelling Dawson materials that, that, that were uncovered over the last um, last couple of months. Uh, and then based on the, the results from that drilling and market conditions, we'd look to, to uh, pursue follow-up drilling and geophysics on, uh, on those target areas. Uh, as it relates to um, progressing the, the PGM deposit uh, at Panton, um, we're, we're finalising our, our new Jork resource, uh, and then that will unlock being, a, being able to wrap the mine design uh, or stoke optimizations mine design around that resource. Uh, that'll give us a view on, on what is the, the annual uh, tonnage capacity of, of the mine, how much, can we, how much ore can we get out of the mine, uh, and then that'll kick off um, finalising the, the, the process and flow sheet design work as well. A lot of that work has been progressed in parallel throughout this year, so we, we expect to be able to turn that around reasonably quickly once, uh, once we finalise that, that new resource. Uh, and then that will ultimately um, lead to delivery of the, the scoping study, uh, which, which, as I say, we'll, we'll look to, to um, release in, uh, in early Q4. Uh, and parallel to all of that work, we continue to, to obviously optimise the flow sheet, um, you know, de-risk it even further and, and drive improved economics um, from that flow sheet as well. So I think you know we, we obviously represent deep value at the moment, given that you know replacement cost of circa thirty million dollars behind us, um, and even on a I guess a, a dollar per ounce of our high grade ounces, it's about five or six dollars, and and then you can uh, essentially halve that again for um, the the palladium equivalent resource of dollars per ounce. Um, we're well capitalised to deliver on. Um, on the aforementioned uh, activities um, through through the next couple of quarters, um, and I guess the other point to note here is we are an ASX and AIM listed uh, company, and and certainly that AIM listing isn't a token listing. It does provide additional liquidity, as shown by the the chart on the right. So yeah, I, I um, open up the question shortly, but but do just want to reiterate that um, you know. Investing in future metals is buying a high quality resource, well, a high quality, high grade PGM resource, very difficult to, to replace or find anywhere else. Um, and during a time when, when clearly, you know, the, the, PG, the markets are, are soft and the PGM, the PGM prices are, are at, at, at some lows, um, you, you know, I think, um, I think that there's a there's a huge opportunity ahead of uh, of future metals over the next couple of quarters, um, uh, particularly because we ha we have progressed the project to a stage where we can quite quickly um, move through uh, the the bankable feasibility stage and, and get it to to production once the market conditions um, to do so materialise. So I'll end it there and, and open up for questions. Thanks, JD. Uh, look, we have had a couple of questions come through. Uh, we'll start with um, the, the first question. Now, some people compare Panton to the Jalamar project. The current share price of both companies does not reflect this comparison. Now, we appreciate that there, there's no, this is no doubt complex and Jalamar is a larger resource, but can you explain whether they are similar in economic viability in terms of bringing both these resources to market? Yeah, that, that is. A, I mean, it's a very complex question. Uh, I would say, you know, Julemar or, or Chalice is is a uh, is an outlier relative to the, the PGM exploration and development comps on Australia and and more broadly. Um, you know, I, I can't comment on on specific reasons to why that is. I mean, certainly uh, Chalice do present the project as a, a nickel or a nickel equivalent uh, project, or the largest I think largest undeveloped nickel sulphide project, and certainly the price is a nickel market and its exposure to, um, I guess, the, the growth in uh, batteries um, ha may have something to do with that. Um, I guess how we we see ourselves differentiated against Chalice is that we do have a discrete high-grade portion as part of our, um, our ore body, which is affording us this development optionality um, that we're looking at in the scoping study to, to, to progress a, a low capital um, option for the project. And really that, that allows us to look at 
really minimising dilution to the current shareholder set um, ahead of getting um, the, the project into uh, a, a cash flow positive stage. So, Jade, why is the company looking at downstream processing? Doesn't that increase capex? Yes, yeah, so it, 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 I, I guess we. I have stepped through the the, the benefits of the downstream processing somewhat, but to, to reiterate, um, it does it does increase capex somewhat. But given that we're producing um, such a high grade uh, concentrate, it means that that additional facility required uh, is is quite nominal. Um, and, and what it what it unlocks is the ability to produce um, refined or semi-refined metals products that you sell to you sell directly to end customers, um, which means that you get high payabilities for those for those uh, products, and you 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 you're more in the conversation in terms of the I guess the clean energy transition as well. Um, if you produce a, a a a concentrate, the the benefits are that. Um, you know there aren't that there isn't that additional uh, cost for, for upgrading, but you are selling it to a trader or a smelter and necessarily paying you know TCs and RCs and payability limits um, as as part of that trade off. Uh, and, and certainly our modelling is showing that the 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 downstream integration route is is quite favourable. So what's the company's plan following the delivery of the scoping study? That's yeah, a good question. So I guess the the, the scoping study um, gives us a, a, a document which allows us to, I guess, um, inform the market, inform um, potential off-takers, and perform, uh, inform um, you know, government parties and, and potential partners as to the um, the, the the opportunity at, at Future Metals. Um, so it does, I guess, unlock. Um, or allow us to mature a lot of the, these partnering discussions and, and also, um, you know, progress uh, discussions as they re relate to potentially financing the project. Um, and that's, that's on, you know, in parallel to uh, potentially looking at um, running a, or taking a bulk metallurgical sample um, from, from Panton and uh, testing the flow sheet at a, at a close to demonstration scale to support, pardon me, fast tracking that um, that route to a bankable feasibility stage. Um, so you'd be you'd be uh, running all of those discussions in parallel in aid of uh, you know maturing the, the the project to a level where you can make a, a, a final investment decision. So you mentioned partnerships there. Is the company currently in a position to engage in outside strategic partnerships by way of investment or off takes or joint development opportunities in order to progress Panton? And if so, can the company shed some light on where you land with those with such partnerships. Yeah, so we certainly are having um, partnership discussions across uh, a number of levels, um, and particularly as it relates to the two facets that make up our business, a being progressing the the, the PGM deposit and also the nickel sulphide exploration. Um, so we've had interested parties ac across both. Uh, it would certainly be my uh, ambition that we. Uh, that we culminate um, uh, one of those those discussions into a a, um, a formal partnership through the second half of, of 2023, um, and and uh, uh, and but certainly you know we're we're not at a stage to um, I guess provide any more information uh, as to those discussions at this moment. Thanks, Jody. Now, with state and federal governments throwing money at critical mineral projects, can the company share whether you're in the process of receiving or applying for any such funding aside from EIS co-funding of drill holes? Yeah, I think it, I mean, it's a great question and it, it does, uh, I guess, allow me to highlight the the um, benefits of uh, owning a, a critical metals pro pro project in a well-capitalised Western jurisdiction like Australia. Um, certainly there's a big push uh, for onshoring um, onshoring uh, and friendshoring uh, critical min mineral supply chains. Um, and I think that Future Metals can really be at the centre of that as it relates to platinum palladium supply into, um, you know, into Western nations such as uh, the US, the UK, Japan uh, and, and Korea. Um, and, and certainly uh, Australia, the Australian federal and state government has a range of initiatives out there um, 
which which do provide additional funding uh, or non non dilutive finance through the study phases and and at um, at the construction finance stage as well. So I certainly you know see that you know once we get this this scoping study in place. Um, we we should be front and center in terms of the potential recipient for um, for those funding measure, measures. Uh, particularly, I think you know the the pool of funds grows significantly as you near um, construction and a final investment decision. Um, so that there's multiple multiple pools of funds available there, uh, and and certainly our uh, our position in the East Kimberley in Northern Australia um, also shows you know demonstrates this potential to, to tap into the North Australian Infrastructure Fund as part of our overall capital stack for progressing Panton. Thanks, Jardy. And just a couple more before we finish. Um, so with a number of PGM projects in WA that are looking to get off the ground, uh, in your view, is there a path for Future Metals to build a plant utilising the life zone technology to process material from Chalice, Podium or Galileo, utilising the infrastructure advantages inherent to Future Metals? Yeah, that's a great question, obviously, by an a, a attentive, <laughs> attentive shareholder. Um, I think there's there's a huge potential to, um, to partner with a downstream uh, technology provider and, and potentially uh, benefit from a first mover advantage to um, to create a a, um, a downstream processing hub for the um, the the deposits that that are somewhat stranded at the moment. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so so um, in, in short, I think there is a there is large potential to um, to engage in that as part of the overall business strategy for progressing future metals. Thanks, Jardine. Two more to go before we finish up. Um, when can we expect updates on the current drilling at BC1 and Panton North? Uh, yeah, through through July and August. And just to finish, Jardine, what would you regard as Future Metals' major point of difference? Well, I think it's the the maturity of the the asset in terms of its um its you know potential pathway to production, which I've, I've you know I think stressed at length um, as part of this presentation, but it's also um, you know the the grade of the deposit as well, and that's that's what you can't uh, easily re replicate. A, a the fact that you know we have a very hard to discover PGM deposit, but then you've also got a PGM de de deposit that's also the highest grade relative to its comparable projects in Australia. Uh, and the fact that it's you know it's in in Australia, um, it's it's in the prime uh, mining jurisdiction in a very investable country um, when the majority of supply is, is being sourced from um, uh, countries that don't compare as favourable uh, favorably, favorably. Thanks, Jody. Look, that's all the time we have today. Um, look, thank everyone for uh, for joining me and I'll also like to thank Jody for presenting and taking the time to answer some questions. Now, as I mentioned before, a recording of the webinar will be on Future Metals website and social media platforms later today. Jardy, before I let you go, do you have any final comments to leave with us today? No, I just want to say thank you for those that that um that dialed in and and you know my my email and phone's always open for for any more questions or discussions uh, offline as well. Fantastic. Well, that wraps it up for us here. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.